this is Dr. Kate Crowley with my co-authors, Dr. Donna Valenti, Grace Sang, and Kristen Guest. We've created Advanced Grammar Fundamentals for a Pluralistic Society. This is a skill-building webinar where you will build the skills on how to elicit and analyze complex syntax. This is Module 3, where we look at the language samples and videos of third and fourth graders. Thanks to the parents and the students for allowing us to use these videos in an online course. We have blurred the faces for additional privacy. So we're going to be using the SLAM materials, which are available for free download at leadersproject.org. Um, they're expository and narrative, and also social and pragmatic language. We look at taking perspectives and theory of mind and inferring emotions, as well as you know, um, causal, temporal, and relational cohesion, making inferences, problem solving, making meaningful predictions. So we look at a lot, certainly a lot of expository language. This is one thing I have been using for 25 years. It's, I call it the subway. If you live in a place like New York where you have subways or trains that are usually used by your students you're evaluating, it's a great source. Um, Bunny Goes to School and um, Dog Comes Home are both available online. They're language elicitation tasks. These are for four years old through early elementary. Then we have Baseball Troubles and Lost Cell Phone for late elementary through high school. Um, they're all available, again, at leadersproject.org. Here are the three kids we're going to be looking at, the three students. Goku is eight years, eight months old. He's in the third grade. His family speaks Bengali and Arabic and very little English. Goku attended preschool in New York City and is currently in a monolingual English classroom. He speaks entirely English at school and predominantly Bengali and Arabic at home. His mom considers him to have strong language skills and reports that L1, which was uh, Bengali, developed typically. She also states he often acts as her interpreter. Goku's teacher reports he's made impressive gains in writing throughout the last eight months, going from writing sentences to writing full paragraphs after receiving ENL support. So we're going to look at Goku and the subway. All right, so can you tell me what happened? Oh, uh, a person's leg got stuck in the train. Oh, okay. Anything else? Uh, someone's reading a book. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how did this happen? Uh, the, the, the person was probably doing something else and the door was open and he didn't see. But, but when I was closing, he went and it was too late and his leg got stuck. Okay, did this ever happen to you? Mm -mm. Okay. All right. What would you do if this happened to you? I would probably... I don't really know. You better figure it out. Yeah. Someone might pull my leg in. Someone might pull your leg in? Maybe. Maybe? So, did this ever happen to you? Uh -uh. No? Okay, so I'm going to tell you about the one time it happened to me. I was in the subway and then we got to my stop, but I was really tired. So I was yawning, I was like, oh, and I didn't notice that the door was gonna close. So I ran with my bag and my bag got stuck and I couldn't get out. And then so I was like, help. And then the conductor, luckily he heard me. So he opened the door and I was able to get out. Has that ever happened to somebody you know? Have you ever seen so. it? No? Did you ever see it? Never? No, never? Okay. So if you look at Goku, you can see that he is just easily responds to the questions and gives us all the information we need. I love this. Can you tell me what happened? A person's leg got stuck in a train. That's the story. How did it happen? And he tells us, well, the person was probably doing something else. The door was open. He didn't see. But when it was closing, he went. It was too late. And his foot, leg got stuck. Beautiful language synthesizing exactly what happened. Here that sentence is. So the first one is just for context. He went is your independent clause. When it was closing, he went. He went is the independent clause. And your dependent clause here is when it was closing. It's an adverbial clause. Remember, you can test that because it can go to the front. It can move. He went when it was closing or when it was closing, he went. That's your adverbial clause and it clearly indicates time. So it's a complex sentence with one independent clause and one dependent adverbial clause. And it was too late is an independent clause, and is your conjoining conjunction, and 
his leg got stuck, is your other independent clause. So that's a compound sentence with two independent clauses. Now we're going to watch Goku's Bunny Goes to School. Uh, so tell me the story of what happened here. So what happened here is that there's a boy going to school and he has a rap and he has a rabbit with him and the teachers uh, and the teachers is uh, teaching the class about carrots and then the then the rabbit came out of his book bag then he thought and then he thought of carrots the, he he remembered that he had carrots with him mm -hmm. so he probably fed the carrot the carrots to uh, stop the bunny and the mom took the rabbit away <laughs> uh, yeah why why did the bunny jump out of the back Oh, think? because he thought because he thought uh, the carrot was real on the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, why do you think some students are afraid? And why are some laughing? Uh, some students are afraid because the bunny might bite them or something. Mm -hmm. Why and are some laughing? Some laughing because like the uh, bunny jumped down and like this book bag and like. Everyone's crying. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> How did the mom know she had to come to the school? Because the teacher called the mom. Mm -hmm. Why did she come to the school? To pick up the rabbit. Why? Did she have to get the rabbit? Because it was running around the whole classroom mm -hmm. and everyone was distracted. What, what do you think will happen when the boy goes home? He might not get to bring anything else to school ever. Okay. What is the teacher thinking now? Uh, teacher is thinking. Hmm. So what do you think? The teacher is thinking the rabbit won't come ever again. <laughs> <laughs> and how does she feel about that? <laughs> Happy. Yeah. You'll see that he does a beautiful job of answering all the questions, making the inferences we need, making reasonable predictions, taking perspectives, knowing theory of mind. He does a beautiful job. So let's look at the particular sentences. The examiner said, why did she need to pick up the rabbit? And he said, because it was running around the whole classroom and everyone was distracted. The independent clause is inferred. Why is it? Because she picked, I'm sorry, the independent clause is inferred. She picked up the rabbit. That's your independent clause. Now you may say, why? Why should that be inferred? And I would say, well, because that's how it works. It's already known. And I actually did exactly that. You said, why is it inferred? Hypothetically. And I respond, I didn't say it is inferred because. I say, well, because, and I give you my answer. So we do this on a regular basis, and the independent clause would be inferred. The dependent clause would be because it was running, he was running around the classroom, and everyone was distracted. Again, that's a compound adverbial clause. The first uh, independent clause in the adverbial phrase in the dependent clause is it was running, it was the first clause in the adverbial phrase is it was running around the cl whole classroom, and the second one is everyone was distracted. So it's a complex sentence with two dependent clauses. The teacher is thinking is your independent clause in this sentence. The rabbit won't ever come again, meaning um, it's your noun clause. The teacher is thinking it. The teacher is thinking it. The rabbit won't come ever again. So it's an independent clause with a dependent clause complex sentence. Our last boy in, is a fourth grader, 10 years, six months old, six month old. Uh, Batman is a 10-year, six-month-old fourth grader um, at a public school in New York. He was born in the U.S. but moved to the Dominican Republic when he was two months old. His mom said Batman attended 
preschool in the Dominican Republic from ages three to four. He continued kindergarten and part of second grade in a private school in the DR where Spanish was the language of instruction. Batman performed well in kindergarten. In first grade, his mother reported that Batman was having some difficulty expressing himself and retaining information in school, but she attributed this to disruptions in his family life as his parents were getting a divorce at that time. After the family relocated to the United States in March of his second grade, he was placed in a monolingual English classroom for two months and then moved to his current classroom in May of second grade. The move to New York was sudden and needed for a family matter, but his mom said that Batman was very sad for a long time afterwards because he left his friends and especially he missed his maternal grandfather who he lived with and with whom Batman was extremely close. Here's Baseball Troubles, you can have a look at that. They believe me because one of my friends tell me what what happened. He thinking who threw, who threw the ball and who cracked the window because on, we never know who, we never know how many calls the window, like it cost like millions or hundred or something. Again, what I love about Batman is he's always trying to give us, he's very creative, he wants to help you get the great language sample that he knows you're looking for. Okay, so here is, uh, they believe in me, is your independent clause in this sentence, because all of my friends tell me that your dependent adverbial clause telling them why they believe in me. What happened is your dependent noun clause. So here we have a complex sentence with two dependent clauses, one adverbial and one noun clause. Um, this is a great sentence. He thinking is an independent clause, of course, as we know now that he's thinking. That um, is, because it's contractible, can be deleted. Um, and uh, we don't know if it's dialectal, if it's second language learning. We don't know, but we're not going to go crazy over that because we're really looking at whether he can form these sentences. He is thinking who threw the baseball, who throw the baseball, throws the baseball. He's missing the S or he doesn't have the irregular past tense. We don't know, but again, it could be developmental, it could be second language learning, it could be a, a disorder, but I would not focus on this given his um, language acquisitional history. And who cracked the window. So we have two dependent noun clauses. Because we never know, those are, that's your dependent clause, how, this is what we don't know, that we don't know it. So this is your dependent noun clause within an adverbial clause because we never know how many cost the window like it costs millions or hundred or something remember that he's a Spanish speaker cuanto cuesta la ventana so he knows there's some marker of amount how much the window costs or how much the cost the window the actual word order is quite different in English to express that than it is in Spanish but he's giving us the features the the, the, the markers that, that we want how many, much, the window costs, puts it in a different order, but that could certainly be second language acquisition. I wouldn't fault him for that. He has some really interesting sentences going on. So it's a complex sentence with one, two, three, four different dependent clauses. So once we develop the expertise and the ability to identify complex syntax and the kinds of different clauses we use to make sentences, we can identify whether a student is having difficulties accessing the curriculum due to disordered or delayed syntax. Then we can help them. Once the disorder is identified, what can be done in therapy? And so that we just have a couple of slides showing this um, that you can turn to. That wasn't the purpose of this webinar, but we didn't want to leave you with nothing. So here's Dr. Donna Valenti developing adverbial clauses using a naturalistic and engaging approach. So Dr. Valenti, can you please show us how you might help these kids in a more natural way develop an understanding of how to make inferences, how to connect things together, how to problem solve, and how that would come out, how you can develop syntax that will help them develop those skills. Okay, simple little activity. I can't because. Take some water, <laughs> wet the seat up, and tell the kid, sit down. Now, do you really put the water on? Oh, put the yeah. Water, put the put water, the water on, on. on. We got lots of water. We got sure? lots of towels. Okay. Yeah. 
So we wet it all up. Whoops. And we tell it, but it really, I mean, really wet it. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm holding myself back here. It's, <laughs> it's not my chair. And you tell the kid, sit down. And he says, no, sit down. <laughs> no. Why can't you sit down? Oh, you can't because the chair is wet. Okay, and then you get the kid to just say it. Just tell me I can't because the chair is wet. And then you get the kid to repeat it. And one of the things that I found in the umpteen years that I was working, you don't make the whole big thing repeat, repeat, because that makes it unnatural. Just get the kid used to the hand movement and he can just go like this and he knows that he's gonna repeat it. I can't because it's wet. And then you do various other things, a slot substitution. You take dirt from, I'm not gonna do it, but you take dirt from the flower pot. Yeah. And you put it on the chair, sit down. <laughs> and the kid says, I can't because it's dirty. If he can't, you could help him with, oh, you can't because it's dirty. And then give it to him this way. The and some of them even have difficulty kids who are truly language impaired will have difficulty with that subject pronoun and that's another easy thing to do and a lot of fun because it's you and then they take their fa you 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 I I I I, I, I you you her her she <laughs> She, she can't because it's wet. Yeah, she can't because it's wet. You wow. make it active and you make it, it try Fine. to bring it, yeah, and try to bring it as natural as possible. But and, and it's the very natural. Thing, this right? is something that, that could be, it happens a lot. Yeah. You can't sit down. You can't sit down on a bus. On the have, subway. Well, yeah. I couldn't sit down in the library just before because <laughs> I can't because the chair is dirty. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Donna. Marilyn Nippold and, and uh, her colleagues in 2017 suggested a therapy protocol in developing clause embedding through, one, explicitly teaching students the functions of different clauses. For example, teaching students to use relative clauses to define high-level vocabulary. She was looking at fables in this, in this particular article. And then the fox noticed the crow's talons, which are a type of claw that is super sharp and strong. So those Two embedded clauses telling about talons and the type of claw um, are very helpful in students learning how to use those kind of dependent clauses, relative clauses in this place, in this case, and teaching students keywords that are embedded in a variety of clauses. We get this cause a lot, but also after, before, although, whereas, if, until, even though there's so many in module one, we went through them. How to support causal development in therapy. There's additional resources. This is the Weiss, Weissman, Weil, and Schul article um, from um, uh, evidence-based practice briefs that talks about complex syntax interventions for young children. Um, and this is one of my favorite things to recommend, which is um, the SERP Institute Word Generation, which provides an enormous amount of free materials that you use weekly to build complex language, the ability to persuade, to problem solve. Um, they, you use focus on five vocabulary words a week that are across disciplines, like discuss and analyze and evaluate and combine. And now they've added science, math, it sports literacy, and it sports English language learners. There's even some stuff now for third graders through high school. This is the end of module three, uh, which is the end of our webinar. This was the analysis of third and fourth grade language samples. If you want to build those skills, we recommend that you go to leadersproject.org and finish this course doing the assessment, which will really prove whether you have actually acquired the skills. Thank you so much. Um, thanks.